For 60 years, the United States equestrian team has called Hamilton Farm in Gladstone, New Jersey home. In this barn talk, we learn about the history and evolution of the world-renowned facility, the historic riders, horses, and competitions it has hosted, and the integral role it still plays in the U.S. high-performance programs. This facility is as iconic. It was um, built in 1917, and starting in 1950, the USCT was able to call this facility its home, and in 1961, it actually became a full-time training center for our United States equestrian team for the horses and riders and coaches. They lived and trained here year-round. Today, um, it continues to be a very vibrant training facility. I'm Bonnie Jenkins. I'm the executive director of the United States Equestrian Team Foundation. I've been with the USCT since 1999, um, and that's when it was fielding and funding the um, international teams to represent our country. And then in 2004, the USCT was um, transitioned to a foundation where the sole responsibility of the USCT was to do the fundraising to help support um, our international teams and the Federation's high performance program. So I've been, I've been here in Gladstone and with the USCT since 99 and uh, with the foundation since its inception in 2004. Riders love to come here because it is the USCT and it's where all the great riders have been and have competed, so my feeling is that the arena is a really special place, and it's one in which I think other riders are always honored to compete in. My name is Maureen Pethick, and I am the communications coordinator for the USCT Foundation. I have worked here for almost 24 years. My main responsibilities are the communications effort, so working with our PR company, maintaining and updating the website, and I work a lot with the facility and events that happen here. I liaise with you know, private people as well as our own events. I think the riders feel very proud to ride in that arena. I know I feel proud to come to work every day to this building. It's, it's, a, beautiful, it's a beautiful facility. On site here in Gladstone, we have nine employees with the USCT Foundation that help in the aspects of our fundraising and philanthropic role. And we also have here in Gladstone, which we're thrilled to have, is uh, some of the high performance staff of the Federation. So uh, Will Connell, who is uh, Director of Sport and uh, the Director of Show Jumping, Managing Director of Show Jumping, Lizzie Chesson, um, and some of the support staff are all here in Gladstone. I think it's important for people to really understand um, the role of the USCT Foundation because our, we are the philanthropic partner of U.S. Equestrian, who is the national governing body for the sport. And while they um, are responsible for the sport, um, we are responsible for supporting them and supporting um, the high performance programs and um, everything from developing rider up to the elite. And that entire pathway is so important to our success ultimately. Looking forward to um, Paris 2024 and our home games LA 2028. So our role is incredibly um, important and critical for us to make sure that our up and coming riders have the training and international competition opportunities that are necessary so that they're really ready and confident when they are asked to ride on an um, a international team. And I think that's one of the things that's really important for people to understand is how, how important that pathway is in those programs. It's not just the Olympic Games, but it's what will prepare our horses and riders to get there and when they get there to be successful. So we're really proud of that and we're incredibly, incredibly appreciative and grateful to the donors. And that's everybody from, you know, your $35 donor up to, um, you know, our major gift um, and leadership giving donors. Uh, they're all really important and we, we couldn't be more appreciative of what they do for our teams.
James Cox Brady, who was a New York financier, um, started to de develop this property in around 1911. He bought his first 180 acres for about $100 an acre. And he built it up over time to about 5,000 acres over three counties, at which time it was a very large working farm and he had a lot of people in the area, employed them, had them working. It was a working farm. They went out to farmer's markets. I believe they have cultivated 4,000 of the 5,000 acres at that time. It was a pretty resplendent estate. The barn was built in 1917, completed in 1917. Where our offices are, my understanding is that before it was offices, when it was Mr. Brady's barn, where he housed his Percherons and Clydesdales and his hackney ponies and his prize animals, as he called them, um, that area of the office was a storage area for carriages. So Mr. Brady died of pneumonia in 1927. After that time, I don't think much was done with the farm. I think his grandson had some cows and had a milk business for a little while, but mostly it wasn't really used until about the 1940s, 1942 to 1947. This was a merchant marine hospital. Brady's third wife financed that, and they had, it was set up for 200 merchant marines that came in, and whether they needed surgery or whatever, you know, during the World War II era. Interestingly enough, it was also used as a cannery for vegetables and sending things for the war effort at that time. So moving on forward, 1950, when the dissolution of the cavalry happened, because if you remember, the cavalry represented us in international sport before the USCT was involved. So for instance, 1912, I think was the first time uh, equestrian competed in the Olympics, that was the cavalry. So in 1950, when the cavalry um, was dissolved, the USCT was formed, but we had no home yet. So in 1961, this barn was leased to the USCT. And that's when we started having riders live here, trainers live here. It was a simpler life back then. You know, there were no sponsors or syndicates that owned horses. The horses were, I believe, either owned by the USCT or lent to the USCT. And the horses actually lived in this building. And the riders, you know, riders tell stories of living upstairs in the dorm rooms. So it was a very different time. 